uh, when we think about the success of Wikipedia, which has been extraordinary, one of the questions people always have is, did you expect that level of success? And obviously on one level, the answer has to be no. Uh, Wikipedia is now the fifth most popular website. Um, it's part of the infrastructure of the world. Um, it's seen by hundreds of millions of people. Um, and so obviously I couldn't have anticipated all that. But on the other hand, I always thought that it was a big idea. I knew that Wikipedia could be really, really successful. I remember looking at a list of the top 100 websites back in the early days, and I saw an encyclopedia reference type of site at about number 50. And I thought, oh, well, if we do a really good job, we might be in top 100 or top 50. Obviously, we've surpassed that by quite a bit. Yeah, so I was always against the idea of advertising for Wikipedia. Um, I didn't know how we could survive, um, but I didn't really like the idea of advertising as a business model for something like this. So in the early days, we didn't really um, pursue it. Uh, there was some talk, maybe we'll have to put ads on at some point, but it was not something that we ever wanted to do. So there wasn't any particular point uh, where there was a decision made not to do it. Um, it just was never part of the plans, you know, in the first place. We didn't have clear plans. Well, there are many different misconceptions about Wikipedia. Uh, one of them uh, is that somehow the Wikimedia Foundation, the organization at the top, um, controls the editorial content in a traditional uh, manner that say an encyclopedia publisher would have back in, back in the old days. And that's completely not true. It's really all fully controlled by the community. Uh, and that's you know, really important to understanding what Wikipedia is. But then the other misconception that people have follows directly from that. Once they've understood that, they think, oh, well, it's complete anarchy, uh, that there's uh, 10 million people each adding one sentence each, or that it's like Twitter or something. Anybody can write anything they want. And that isn't true either. There is a system, there is a hierarchy, there is a, uh, a lot of rules, a lot of values that go into Wikipedia. So it's neither controlled top down, but neither is it uh, an anarchy. So I do think that very often people take Wikipedia for granted. Um, not for any particular reason other than that it's just always been there to many people, particularly young people. It's ubiquitous. Um, it's, it's like a magic thing in our lives. Um, and increasingly, of course, people are getting information from Wikipedia without always realizing that they got the information from Wikipedia. So if you're using uh, Amazon Alexa or Siri or Google Home, any of these voice assistants, um, it's quite easy to get information from Wikipedia without necessarily understanding that it came from Wikipedia. And that's another way that people uh, can take Wikipedia for granted, though. In many ways, we are the infrastructure for the knowledge society, and it's important for people to understand that. So I, I think Wikipedia should be very careful about large donations. One of the wonderful things about Wikipedia is that the vast majority of the money uh, that supports the project is from small donors. And that's really important for our intellectual independence, for the independence of the community. I think nobody would like a world in which a handful of major donors could dictate what Wikipedia says. That, that leads us down a very bad path. At the same time, we see questions uh, arise. Uh, a lot of big companies, um, you know, uh, Google, Amazon, uh, you know, I don't want to single them out, but these big companies are making good use of Wikipedia data. They're um, using it in all kinds of ways to power uh, all kinds of new projects, um, new products like Amazon Alexa or Google Home, Apple Siri. And when we see that kind of thing, a lot of people say, gee, well, they should probably cough up some money. And I, I'm not one to say, no, don't cough up money. Uh, at the same time, it's a double-edged sword. Uh, one of the things that we really do value uh, in the Wikipedia community is our independence. Certainly when it comes to certain um, political issues, and, and Wikipedia is steadfastly neutral, but as a community of internet collaborators um, who are trying to give this free gift to the world, we do have certain political interests around openness, uh, around freedom of expression and so forth, where the community is reasonably unified that we should be uh, a thoughtful player in dialogues about internet regulation and so forth. 
Well, if we're viewed in some battle about copyright as merely a proxy for uh, Google uh, because they give us tens of millions of dollars, that's not a good thing. They don't give us tens of millions of dollars, of course, right? <laughs> even if people may think they do. And that's important. It's really important that we are able to say, no, actually, we're a community. We speak in a more broad way about the needs of internet users who are actually using the internet, that it isn't a battle between the old media industries and technology companies. There's actually the users who are an important part of that. And we can speak for those users in a way that the others can't because they have certain economic uh, impetus and constraints. So it's a double-edged sword. Um, certainly if uh, anybody sees this from Google and Amazon and Apple and Facebook, uh, I'm not saying don't give us money, right? <laughs> I'm just saying I think it's important uh, that everybody understand that we are fiercely independent and will remain so. Oh, what is the one change? Uh, there's so many small changes rather than any one big change. Uh, this morning I was, uh, well, I was on my phone on the way over here in a taxi and uh, I went to a category page in the app and category pages don't render in the app. It's been a long time. I, I have no idea why. So if there's anybody at the foundation, could you please fix that? Yes, <laughs> I don't understand it. It seems straightforward to render a category page, so let's fix that. But I'm being silly, of course. That's a minor technical problem. Um, yeah, I mean, I think the, the biggest thing that I would like to see is an increase in the diversity of participation. And I mean that in, in a couple of ways. Uh, first of all, I think that our uh, diversity of participation along gender lines uh, can use a lot of improvement. Uh, we know that there are a lot of problems in Wikipedia uh, that are caused not by active malicious bias, but just because of certain blindness, um, that people aren't interested in certain topics because of their own life context and backgrounds. And the more we have a diverse community contributing, the, the stronger we are. And the other uh, element of that is uh, work in Wikipedia in the languages of the developing world. Mm -hmm. We're seeing a lot of progress in that area, but there's still a long way to go. And I really want us to continue to focus on uh, the needs of people who are coming online for the first time in geographies uh, where they have very weak access to information. Um, they have a genuine human need for access to knowledge. Uh, we should be playing an important role there. Uh, and I want us to continue to focus our efforts on helping those communities. So one of the things that's happening in the world of Wikipedia that I'm watching with keen interest is um, the creation of um, sort of bot created content from data from Wikidata and from other sources uh, in some languages that otherwise would be very small in Wikipedia. And for me there's a really, uh, it's, a, it's a purely empirical question and it may not be that there's only one answer. We may actually learn there's more nuance to it. So here's the question. So let's say you have a language um, from a relatively uh, poor part of the world People are getting online in big numbers for the first time. And the Wikipedia that they encounter in their own language is basically very big but not very good, which is basically what bot content ends up being. So then does it destroy the reputation of Wikipedia with those people and they think, I don't know, it's this weird thing, it's sort of machine translated from English or it's made out of a bunch of listings of facts and it has no nuance and it's just not very good and so people aren't bothered to get involved. Also they don't see any need to get involved. They feel like, oh, well, the, the bots will improve and it'll be fine and we don't have to participate, which I think is a very incorrect uh, as a factual matter. I think we're a very, very long way from seriously having AIs contribute in a fully meaningful way. At the same time, there's another approach that says, look, at least we'll be there, right? At least if you Google some term in your own language and you will find Wikipedia because we all know the main way people find Wikipedia is they do a search on a search engine and there's the first thing is Wikipedia and you go and you read and you learn and you see an error and you get started participating. And so from a pure SEO point of view, it probably does help to attract people to those projects. Well, it, nothing really deliberate is going on in terms of experimenting, A-B testing, but we're accidentally getting some A-B testing because there are very similar languages, some of which some random volunteer somewhere thought, I'm going to do this in my language, and they've built a million entries uh, with bot content, and then other languages that didn't happen. 
And I think we can look and see after two years' time what has actually happened. And I would love to see some really thoughtful research around that. It's, it's not easy because there's always going to be confounding factors. Um, maybe the language where one person got motivated enough to create a million entries with a bot is also the language where that same person got motivated to start gathering a community and hosting local meetups and building out and reaching out to universities. And maybe that's actually what brought in the community, not the million crappy articles. So uh, it, it's hard to sort these things out, but I think it's something that we should definitely uh, very carefully take a look at, uh, the question of crowding out versus um, providing some, some starting points. So I think one of, the, one of the complicated questions about Wikipedia, about the comprehensiveness of Wikipedia, and even about certain biases in Wikipedia, is that because we have a very clear and very proper, in my mind, insistence on the use of reliable sources, uh, third-party sources, we don't do original research, then naturally enough, Wikipedia will reflect what's already out there. And to the extent that what's already out there is flawed, then by necessity, Wikipedia will be flawed as well. I mean, hopefully we can rough, knock off a few of the rough edges here and there, but systemically, that's a pretty deep question, pretty deep problem. It's one of my concerns about the, the decline of the profession of journalism that's been going on for the last 10 to 20 years. And I'm speaking specifically about um, local journalism. So all across uh, the US and Western Europe, uh, and other places around the world. Local newspapers have been, uh, I mean, decimated is too mild. Decimated technically means one in 10 killed. It's much, much worse than that. The number of journalists has fallen dramatically um, to, in, in some areas, one-tenth what they used to have. Very common to have less than half of the number of journalists they used to have. So now what happens when it comes to writing the history of a smaller town, um, a smaller area? Well, we're going to see this wonderful uh, sort of historical set of documents called the Daily Newspaper that ran from 1870 to 2000 and then it goes silent uh, because that media is not there anymore. And that's a really bad thing. I think it's something we should all be quite concerned about. Yeah, I mean, I, I think it's a very interesting and tough question because for Wikipedia uh, being an encyclopedia, um, it's not really our role, and we're not very well equipped, and, and I don't even see any way for us to move forward uh, in terms of replacing local newspapers. Uh, and then when we look out there to see what kinds of things are replacing local newspapers, it's pretty thin on the ground. Uh, I mean, there is some stuff, and there are a lot of interesting uh, community journalism projects and things like that I'm, I'm somewhat optimistic about, but the truth is nobody's cracked it yet, and so I, I think there is a problem there. You can just imagine my frustration. I, I've made my life's work, really, a free encyclopedia for every single person on the planet in their own language. Uh, we try really hard to be neutral. We try to be high quality. Obviously, we're not perfect, um, but I don't think anybody doubts the sincerity of the broad Wikipedia community and the passion for facts and to try to get it right. And yet we are in an era where people talk about living in a post-truth world or living in a post-factual politics uh, and things like that, which drives me insane. Uh, facts do matter. They will always matter. Um, and it is frustrating to, to see the level of disinformation, information warfare, the kinds of things that are going on. It's a real race to the bottom. Um, and I, I think it's quite easy for people of any particular political persuasion to blame the other side, but the truth is there's plenty of blame to go around. Um, and a lot of it is structural uh, when we talk about the difficulties, uh, the financial difficulties of the news industry for the last 10, 15 years. This naturally results in a loss of trust in the media. Uh, it results in lower quality media. Um, and oh, it's terrible. So it is frustrating. Um, you know, it's far from where I think we can be. I think we will get back there. I think there is a real, a real human desire for and a willingness to support quality uh, in terms of our information sources. 
uh, but we're still in an era where the business models and the, and, the, and the way the social structures that make that happen are in flux. Uh, so we've probably got a few more bumpy years ahead. And obviously, any time you've got a hiccup in, in the flow of quality information, all those forces who profit from people being malinformed, so I'm talking about political leaders who want to exploit ignorance to foment hatred in order to gain power, they're there to take advantage. Uh, they're always there, uh, and it's a problem. It would be nice if people looked at the page on the EU before they go into Devil's Page. <laughs> yeah, well, well, and it, it's true. I mean, there, it's very often that you will see uh, a major important issue in the news of, of you know, long-term consequences. And the media, even the quality media, who do a good job of, of following it, they tend to follow what happened today. What did, what did Theresa May say this morning? Um, and if you really want to find out what exactly is in Theresa May's, but this is not gonna age well, but I guess Jan by January, <laughs> it'll still be fun. If you just wanna look at you know, what is in Theresa May's proposed deal, which we're voting on here in a few days, mm -hmm. the only place I know of to get a really good, concise explanation of the key points would be Wikipedia. A few newspapers will have run a few bullet point articles, and that's good. They should do more of that. Uh, but in general, you know, when you look at an enormous, I don't know, hundreds of pages, um, for the ordinary citizen, it's completely impossible to even begin to read. I mean, I tried to look at it. There's a lot of wherefores and what have yous and boilerplate language that, that the exact meaning is subtle changes to things that I don't know anything about. It's not very easy for me to understand. And I'm, who's got the time to read hundreds of pages? So you need that kind of concise, clear explanation of what's going on. And hopefully Wikipedia can, can play a role there. Yeah, it's really hard to say. I mean, when we talk about Wikipedia's rules or attitudes, you might even call it, towards things like notability, um, it's a very, very complicated topic. And I sometimes think we are in one direction and sometimes I think we are in another direction and it's really hard to it's really hard to know um, the you know the it's very common in Wikipedia if there's some major globally famous disaster uh, one of my favorite examples is the Grinfell Tower fire everyone is aware of, of that it was a big huge news story at the time and the Wikipedia entry on it is absolutely fantastic and it was actually really good even within 24 hours as it was you know a community coming together collating checking against different news reports coming to the consensus of the central views there would be things our understanding of it and I mean by our I mean all of our understanding of it will have changed over time as there are new revelations or new information comes to light. And Wikipedia tends to do a really good job of reflecting that. So that's a good thing, uh, and I don't really see how to change that. At the same time, nobody really wants Wikipedia to be following the latest tabloid gossip, for example, about some celebrities and so forth. It's just not really meaningful. I think we generally do a good job of sorting out um, what really has some kind of long-term, long-lasting impact. Uh, and not chasing our tails in terms of just writing the fluff of the day. But sometimes I think one, sometimes the other, so I'm a Wikipedian. There's always something to debate. So it's very hard to predict the future, uh, particularly when technology is moving very quickly. Um, one of the big variables, uh, if we think as far ahead as 2100, is uh, the variable of AI, which we've touched on a little bit, um, and to what extent will AI be able to help with or replace the work of humans in writing an encyclopedia? I tend to be quite skeptical of that. Um, I do think AI can help us, um, but I think we're very, very far from, from actually having AIs write Wikipedia. But also, the, tech, the changing tech landscape does mean that companies will come and go. Uh, companies that were previously very powerful will become a lot less so. Um, and new competitors will arise and new things will happen. On the other hand, I do think that uh, Wikipedia is in a pretty good position to be around for the long haul for a few reasons. So, uh, first of all, the, the vision of Wikipedia, a free, high quality, neutral encyclopedia for every single person on the planet in their own language, that's pretty timeless. 
that's something that we could have used 300 years ago. It's something we could be able to use 3,000 years from now. That's, that's not going to change. It's not, um, you know, uh, Instagram, which is not quite as timeless and not quite as valuesome. You know, it's a way of posting pictures to your friends. Like, okay, you can replace that with lots of things and it doesn't actually mean anything.